So hi from Oredev in Malmö, Sweden. We're here at the Night Hacking Format um, for the conference and I'm here with Catherine Collins. So hi Catherine hi. and could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. Um, hi everyone, I'm Catherine Collins. I am a service designer in Innsbruck, Austria and um, like to think and work a lot on um, different problems, whether that relates to how can an organization integrate service design into their practice and into their company, whether that's a small startup or a larger organization. Um, and uh, a lot of my background's been in education, so I'm naturally drawn oh, okay. to um, those types of things, uh -huh. like designing workshops and, and uh, lived experiences yeah. for people. Yeah. Yeah, that's very interesting. Well, because I'm also doing uh, workshops myself. So how would you say, how did that influence you, your work, your background in education? Mm -hmm. How did that influence your, your current work and working with these companies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, regardless of like the learner, it's uh -huh. it's interesting, right? So regardless of the age, uh, there are different learning styles. Mm -hmm. And I, I really um, value uh, learning experiences that are um, drawing on the knowledge that's in the room and mm -hmm. um, uh, more interactive and engaging than a lecture. Um, um, if, if for my learning style, it's what I kind of jump to and so I <laughs> often end up designing um, more hands-on experiences uh, okay. than not, yeah. And, and how is your um, experience uh, with that? What do attendees or learners value more, the hands-on mm -hmm. experience or what do you get from, from your experience in, in that area? Yeah, so I think, I mean, it depends. Um, it's hard to be engaged mm -hmm. every minute that you're in a mm -hmm. workshop and it's hard to be engaged um, uh, all the time that you're sitting as an attendee uh, listening to right. a speaker, right? right. Um, so I think a balance is good and people need moments of rest, but they also need moments of... Uh, and, and reflection, but they also need moments of like uh, discussion and dialogue, whether that's in small groups. Um, so I like to play with that in in an experience. Okay, this yeah, this sounds interesting. This mm -hmm. I actually sounds like a similar. I had a similar experience with that. So you need a balance, and mm -hmm. I, I think um, people uh, value hands-on things a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So it it's sometimes more effort for yourself because you have to wait and just tell all the exercises or all the things you're doing. Uh, but then at the same time, I th I think attendees um, value it more when they can really get their own hands down and and do things themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I think. Um, you get more information mm -hmm. in the space, like brought into the space, you know what I mean? So if like you and I are having a conversation and we're in a group of six, um, if we're paired up in, as two people, we can get further than if we're having a right. big group discussion yes. with six people. Sure. Um, but at the same time, you need to have those big group discussions of, with six mm -hmm. people, depending on where you're at in, in an experience okay, or I project. Yeah, 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 this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, now specifically wha what you um doing in your work, like uh, practically in, in your work and, and these workshops? Yeah, so um, in my work in Austria, so I work for a, a tech startup, mm -hmm. More Than Metrics um, is the name of the company. We have two different products, um, one for customer journey mapping and one mm -hmm. for um, mobile ethnography or research. Oh, okay. um, and so a lot of my work uh, as a service designer is thinking about where is our customer in this? Mm -hmm. um, and so whether we're designing a new feature or communicating um, a new message, it's testing that and, and understanding where is the customer, what is their perception or mm -hmm. wish, um, and trying to br have give them a seat at the, the table. Oh, okay, so this sounds like a lot of communication involved, right? So not just technology, but like talking to people and communicating that so you, you get the best solution for a customer? Yeah, so in some ways it depends on the project, like uh -huh. the research method that we would use. Um, in some cases it might be a, an interview over Skype because our customers are all over the world right. or it might be like uh, a workshop um, that's like co-creative with pens and, and, and paper where customers are, th are working towards a, a question mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. Um, so it really depends, but uh, yeah, a lot of uh, people <laughs> interaction, I guess, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's really it sounds like researching your customer. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. There's I like a that. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of um, potential, I think, right now in trying to understand who mm -hmm. we're designing mm -hmm. with. Um, and uh, what are their needs and behaviors and perceptions and how is what we're building or designing connect to that, you know? Um, so there's a lot of, of fun opportunity there. And then I try and translate that type of work that I'm doing in my job into the workshops that mm -hmm. I do. So 
Um, wow, yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Um, so since you moved to, to Innsbruck, mm -hmm. right, and uh, you, you haven't been uh, born there, so how does this work in, in terms of language and in terms of working in a foreign country? Uh -huh. um, so a lot of the... Uh, so yeah, with my accent, you can tell that I'm from right. the States, but right. um, I'm learning German and <laughs> have... Uh, um, uh, speak French as well, but mm -hmm. um, most of my work is in English. And um, so, in terms of working in a workshop or in a work environment, mm -hmm. uh, it see from my experience a lot of the the common denominator uh, when people come to the table from different backgrounds is to speak in English. Okay. Um, so even though it's um, located in Austria, that that works for that company or yeah. also for your customers. Yeah, yeah, and actually a lot of uh, customers are based in the U.S. Okay. or uh, in the U.K., Australia. So there was, there's a lot of English. Mm -hmm. that's spoken um i mean like all of our materials are in english and so forth but yeah it's, it's been interesting to see the role that uh language plays even in an office mm -hmm. um when there's uh how that influences even the way in which people think about problems you know like german is right. a, yeah it's it's, yeah. Uh, it's interesting yeah. that's it sounds very interesting mm -hmm. um s so since we're here at the ordef conference um what presentation um did you do or are you doing here mm -hmm. yeah so we did a workshop on prototyping with your customer okay and so we focused on how do you give your customer a seat at the table when mm -hmm. it comes time to developing a new feature or a new idea. Um, and we talked about different um, methods of prototyping that you could use, whether that's like a desktop walkthrough with like a piece of paper and mm -hmm. Legos um, or uh, a wireframe and how a wireframe is different from a presentation right. uh, and how a wireframe could be a presentation if it's not done correctly. Um, uh, and so how to make a wireframe a prototype. Um, and so we drew on and talked about different methods um, and then um, said, okay, well, after that, um, let's, let's take these methods that we're working with and even examine the type of prototype that we've created. Um, and so <coughs> uh, there, there was a lot of um, discovery into where can our customer take part in this, if it's at the beginning, mm -hmm. in the middle, um, uh, and one of the cases that we used was uh, a, a feature um, redesign that we did um, this last summer where we were looking at the personas uh, tool within our software and mm -hmm. um, we had to, it was really inflexible and we knew that um, and we knew that customers were telling us that for a while and it just was like, you know, something that we needed to fix, but it was a big fix, right? Because yeah. um, it was one of the first things that people did when they entered into the tool. So um, we played around with um, different methods of both asking the customer, what would they do in terms of a redesign? And we got responses from customers, whether that was like an email with change this, this, mm -hmm. and that, or uh, sketches of what they actually uh -huh. wanted. Yeah. Um, and then in another case, we, we ran like multiple experiments at the same time. So in another case, we had um, customers clicking through a, a click dummy that we had made, you know, mm -hmm. with um, um, just basic software like Proto.io or Marvel and so forth. Um, and we had them giving us feedback on that as well. Um, so we shared that with the participants and had them test mm -hmm. out different ways of, of including the customer. Right. Yeah. So it's a kind of like using the same methods that you would uh, do for your customers um, solutions for your own products that you then can improve upon that. And mm -hmm, Yeah, and giving your customer the time and the space to take part in that. Mm -hmm. Like I think sometimes people think it in to include your customer, it takes a lot of time and money and resources. But the reality is you can set aside uh, an afternoon for a prototyping session, mm -hmm. uh, a workshop. It could be a virtual one. There are plenty right. of resources to do that now right. uh, or technologies to do that now where you have 10 customers and you have them share, uh, you know, sketches or drawings of what they think it should mm -hmm. look like. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's really cool opportunity to do that now. It doesn't have to be a big production. It can be these right. small experiments. Yeah, that can be also very productive. Yet, mm -hmm. well, I mean, once you set aside a few hours and then just chat about it, you can get a lot of good insights, I could imagine. Right? Yeah, exactly. And of course, you, like, you have to incentivize customers as well, um, whether that's like with a free month of the whatever it is you sell mm -hmm. or do or mm -hmm. or m maybe a gift of some sort like right. but sure. that's those are easy things and I, I think people like to engage with the company that they're mm -hmm. um, buying from or um, you know it, and so it's 
they value a good partnership, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I think this, this is always the case. Yeah. Okay, um, so for the Orderdev conference, mm -hmm. um, wha uh, was it your first time here? It was my first time at Orderdev, yeah. Um, so how's <coughs> your experience so far? Yeah, uh, lovely. I mean, I think it's really... Uh, I'm not a developer, so <laughs> it's been nice to to hear the different ideas that are mm -hmm. circulating, but also see how service design and UX are starting to live in a similar space uh, in a developer conference. And I think you'll mm -hmm. see that more and more happening um, where the worlds aren't coexisting, like, right. uh, or, or not, uh, are, are coexisting, yeah. I should say. Um, for example, like at my office, I sit in a room of developers, you mm -hmm. know, and it's, it doesn't need to be this thing where all the developers are caged over here and right. the, you know, uh, loud designers are over there. Like maybe you have to have some expectation management around like noise level and things like that. But, <laughs> but, um, I there think are headphones for this. <laughs> yeah, there are headphones for this. Exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, I've really enjoyed uh, Malmö and, and Ordev. Okay, great. Um, so for everybody who can, uh, cannot attend, what, what would you tell the audience um, about Ordev who, who hasn't been here yet? Hmm. What would I tell the audience who hasn't been here? <laughs> um, I would say that uh, Ordev is a good chance to interact with a lot of folks from all over the world. It feels like it's very um, international uh, and that there's a variety of topics and uh, really interesting keynotes as well that uh, I'm looking forward to attending. Um, so, yeah. Okay, then thank you very much for the interview and yeah. for everybody watching. Thanks for watching and bye. Bye.